Let's see what it looks like on. I shall look. Oh, ah, Facebook. There it is. Facebook. Oh, okay. 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 It's. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to have to turn this. Okay. How's that looking, Hannah? Rotate phone, I think, the other way. Oh, for Pete's sakes. And now put it. Yep. Let's, uh, I said, it's it said on down. the... It's upside, upside down? No, it's not. No, it's sideways. It's delayed. There's a delay. So just... Let's just stop moving. Okay. Yep, there it is. It said if you start it, though, on... I understand. Is it okay? Yes. It's okay. Just... It's very narrow. All right. Well. Hania, do you hear now? Do you hear? Hi, friends. If you can hear me well, please let us know in comments below. We're just doing last uh, double checks of our technical side, and then we'll start in a minute or so. Waiting a thumbs up from my technical team. YouTube, we have thumbs up. I can't see any um, comments on the Facebook yet. Uh, I think on the phone here you can see. I will look. People are watching. Thumbs up on the Facebook. All right. Sorry, Facebook, because so it's we. It's the weird. internet said that if we started a live panoramic, that it would go. All right. Here we are. Good. Yeah, as far as I know. All right. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my kitchen. It is Saturday, and we are about a week away from Easter. So we thought it would be a good time to show you some uh, Polish Easter dishes. And I'm going to prepare one soup, the one that we eat at Easter. And just so I can show you how easy it is. And I believe that this, um, this soup can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming because it's not something that is eaten outside Poland. So... Uh, I am going to show you how to make it today. And it'll only take us about 45 minutes so we can see the soup done by the time we're done. So I have prepared, um, if you're watching, tell us where you're from or where you're watching from. Just uh, give us a, uh, a comment below and start thinking about some questions. Um, as I'm preparing and talking about Easter, Polish Easter, uh, if you have a question, please post in comments and we can discuss. So, where do we have some friends watching from? We got people from Ohio, Maryland, the UK, Stetchings watching, yeah, we have some Stetchings. people from Stetching, yeah. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Paris. Orlando, Pennsylvania, Jacksonville, so a lot of East Coasters because yeah. of the time I met. Yeah, I hope you have a coffee in your hand and are, ready, are ready to... Massachusetts. Um, Maryland. All over the place, eh? All over, eh? Yeah, Illinois. Yeah. Scotty. Scotty. Hey, Scotty. <laughs> All right, so um, what should Jody we... Jody Douglas. Hi, Jody. What should we start with? And t today is a very family, uh, how, well, how do you say it's this? It's a family operation. It's a family today. operation. I have Mark, my husband Mark, uh, behind the phones, making sure the sound is working. Oh, I hope cool. it is. <laughs> and we have my daughter uh, at the computer behind there. She's going to be reading uh, some of your comments. Uh, so let's see. 
I tried to prepare a few dishes for you uh, to show you kind of what we eat. And maybe we'll do one camera at a time. Uh, Mark will come up and I will present some of the dishes. So uh, if you go to my page, polishwithkitchen.com, uh, up at the top menu, you can click on menu and a recipe index and then Easter, it'll show you some of the dishes or actually it'll show you most of the dishes, uh, if not all of them. But Easter uh, in Poland, we celebrate two days. So it'll be Sunday, Easter Sunday, actually almost three days because it starts on Saturday. On Saturday, uh, normally children will prepare baskets full of food and they will take it to church if they're believers, I guess Easter is all about believers. Uh, and the baskets will get blessed by the priest. It's normally a very short, like a five, five seven minute uh, uh, mass. And the priest blesses the food and then the kids take it, take their baskets home. So that, that was always my and my brother's job when we were kids. And then the hardest part was then to go home, walk home and not eat anything out of the basket. That was the hardest. And in the, I did, I did an Easter, short Easter live last year, and I believe that video is still on, on my Facebook page, uh, and I talked about what goes in the Easter basket. But just briefly, it'll be a piece of bread, a piece of smoked sausage, uh, a piece of uh, sweet babka, uh, a couple eggs, salt and pepper, and they all have significance, um, which I talked about in that video, so I'm not going to cover that today. <clears throat> So that's what happens on Saturday. Then on Sunday, we start with, and this may sound weird, but we start with this soup for breakfast. And it's żurek uh, with white sausage. We call it white biała kielbasa in Polish, but I think Americans know it more as fresh sausage. So I have some here. And so I'm going to start with the soup. I'm going to start making the soup. Uh, so to make the soup, and someone, uh, I believe, asked uh, in the event before we started, what's the difference between Jurek and uh, Biawi Barsh, so white Barsh. And the difference is what kind of flour you use to make the starter. So uh, rye flour is to make Jurek and uh, wheat flour is to make uh, Biawi Barsh, white Barsh. Uh, and they taste almost the same. There may be just tiny difference, but not enough to kind of want one or another. I have a uh, Jurek starter and you will see these. Um, it, I basically can make this at home and uh, I do have a recipe on my page for it. Um, but you see these in Polish delis a lot. And it's just a bottle of it says Jurek starter and a lot of the time Oh, this one actually has directions. This is, uh, this is produced by Bacik, a company that uh, imports uh, their, their... Whoopsie. You want to come up with one of the cameras and show Bacik stuff? Or both? <clears throat> they import their stuff from, from Poland and they make uh, pickles and beets and sauerkraut and they also make smoke, smoked meats. And I have just some of them. They're not exactly the same, but this is the kind of stuff that they do. A lot of smoked sausages. This is a, a pastet, so like a liver pate that was baked. I also have a recipe for this on my page. Uh, so Bacik produced... Can you see this when I hold it like this? Bacik produces this one, Jurek. Uh, it says sourdough dough for white barsh. <laughs> okay, uh, and a lot of a lot of the times I I know people who aren't super familiar with uh, Polish cooking. They may know some of the dishes, but they may not know how to make it. We'll go to the store and they'll look at this, and this says nothing. And as I said, this fortunately has a recipe on here or directions, but a lot of them don't because us Poles know what to do with it. Um, so to make this, I'm using two, this is a half a liter bottle. I wonder if this is, has ounces as well. Yep, 17.6 ounces, full ounces. So I'm going to be using two of these, but not until a little bit later. 
And then I have the fresh, fresh sausage, white sausage, and um, bachi also, I believe, carries this. So to make this soup, I apologize, I have to cough. I'm recovering from COVID. <coughs> Sorry. So we're going to take uh, about six links of our sausage. I have four, six, and put it in our pot. And we're going to use the sausage as uh, our base. And also, uh, this soup needs kind of a smoky flavor. So you have a few options. Uh, you can do a beautiful smoked bacon like this. Bachik also carries this. You can do a piece of sausage. You can do another smoked meat if you make some at home. I think I'm going to do half of the sausage today. It's like, I kind of feel like then slicing this and putting it in my soup. I can probably even do a whole one. And if you go to my page, you'll see directions on uh, how much exactly to use. So I'm going to do this. Then I have uh, the famous trio, bay leaves, uh, peppercorns, allspice, and I have half a, or a teaspoon of salt in here. So I'm going to put all this in here. And then I'm gonna, oh, carrot, one carrot, one parsley root, a piece of celery root, <laughs> maybe like a quarter of a small one. And then I'm gonna put uh, one and a half quarts of water. And I am going to set this on the stove behind me and we want to bring this to boil do you know where a cover is babe okay like this yeah okay so our soap has to go for about 30 minutes and as it comes up to boil, uh, some bubbles, kind of solids, will form on, on top. So when this starts bubbling, I'm just going to skim off those solids. But otherwise, once it starts boiling, I'll turn it down and then we'll let it simmer for 30 minutes. Do we have any questions so far? Um, I yes, don't know. Do we? we have one, and it's quite a long one from Jacob L. Fastweek. <laughs> what are you doing? Somebody said it's a little blurry, so making sure it's clear. I think it's more of a uh, a lighting issue in here oh, right now. because it's bright from the Because it's back. bright out there, and it's, cover this a bit. we're having a... And if it's a little blurry, guys, sorry. We normally light, have our lighting setups going and all kinds of things, and it makes it a little different. I think uh, for, with this back light... And also, guys, live isn't as clear as our normal videos because our normal videos are done in 4K, and uh, that's what we got. So, okay. as long as you can hear and see my beautiful wife, then we're good to go. All right. What is some of the questions? Uh, we have a question from Jacob L. Fastweek. Do you find that Polonia and the USA, who may be third, fourth generation, have foods and traditions that are like a uh, time capsule? In the sense, they hold on to handed down recipes and traditions that may have otherwise evolved and changed within Poland. Um, I think, so the question was, I'm not sure if you could hear it all, if uh, Polish recipes that are being prepared by uh, Polish people, third or fourth generations of Poles living in America, if they have evolved or if the recipes in Poland evolved and they are holding on to the methods from uh, their ancestors. And here I think it goes both ways. I think there's some dishes that have evolved to um, follow the ingredients that are available wherever you live. Uh, and they've changed form to uh, to either make it easier because it, you know, people cook a little bit differently now. And same in Poland, some of the dishes evolved and, uh, and there's new dishes also that are popping up that um, 
may have not been around. And one comes to mind <laughs> from the top of my head is uh, Kashoto that I haven't I haven't heard of before or just a couple years ago. And it's kind of uh, our or Paul's take on risotto just made with kasha and whatever other ingredients that you want, either mushrooms or different, different veggies. Uh, and a dish that comes to mind that I know changed in America that is not changed in Poland. For example, I've seen people make uh, gołąbki casserole. So they would layer leaves uh, of cabbage with meat and tomato sauce and bake it as a uh, one pot meal in an oven in the casserole dish. So <clears throat> it definitely happens. Any other questions so far? Uh, yes. Somebody logged in from South Africa. Cool. Okay. Uh, let me find it. Okay. Uh, from Sherry Shafran, Shafranski, uh, do you recommend something else other than pork? As I don't eat any pork at all. Thank you. Um, well, you can skip meat altogether, not altogether, but some of the dishes that are uh, served at Easter don't have any meat in them. So, for example, I have this uh, Sawatka Yazhinova here, and this is, uh, I guess, a veggie salad, you can call it. It's kind of upgraded uh, potato salad. It's got some other vegetables in it, uh, meatless with mayo. Uh, obviously, you can have eggs. I think they meant in the Zurich, my love. Uh -huh. But I think if you if, if you find a good beef sausage... Oh, uh, other... No, I, someone doesn't eat meat doesn't at all? Pork. Oh, pork. Doesn't oh, yeah, pork. yeah, yeah. So I think a good beef kielbasa that you find... Even in the store, smoked chicken... Sure. ...would do. But actually, Zurich was originally uh, a meatless dish. So uh, may, maybe at some point we started adding... Uh, smoky meat because we could. Uh, if you wanted to make it completely meatless, I would go for wild mushrooms and make a base with that um, instead of the sausage and maybe up the veggies a little bit. Any other questions, Hannah? Uh, yeah, from Ursula Mishtal. What is the difference between babka and placek? Thank you. Uh, so I guess I would need a little bit more backstory on that. Babka is normally, uh, so babka is a cake in shape, in round shape made in a bundt cake. Uh, but it can also be like here. This is babka, but it was baked in a loaf pan. So I guess I would need to get clarification uh, on what exactly what kind of babka or what kind of placek you're talking about. Placek is normally a, uh, a cake that is made in rectangular uh, dish and it's larger and it's yeasted uh, dough with uh, buttery kind of the crumble that you make and sometimes you can put fruit on top of it. So you would say that babka is not a yeasted dough? But there is a yeasted babka as well, <laughs> which is the same type of dough as placek, only it's made in the bun in the bun pan. I don't All know. This is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but if someone says babka, uh, then you normally have to also specify what specify what kind, because there's babka pieskova, which is bunt cake babka, not yeasted. There's babka marmurkova, which is also non-yeasted uh, mixture of white and chocolate cake, marble babka. Then there's yeasted babka, which is the yeasted dough in a bundt pan. And placek would be same dough as yeasted babka, but it would be made in a larger dish with uh, the buttery crumble. That's my answer. It's a good answer. Uh, somebody's commenting on the deviled eggs okay. and how beautiful they are and what is in those. Okay, let's talk about deviled eggs. You want to come up? More than anything. All right. <clears throat> so I've made uh, deviled eggs with beets today. And I have sun just hitting them right now. Can you see? Um, so I mixed, I took out the yolks and I mixed them with uh, chvikwa, which is 
horse, horseradish with beets, which I also have right here. And that would give them the nice color and a little bit of mayo and salt and pepper, whatever other spices you want in them. I do have a recipe for that on my page in the Easter tab. Um, and I think uh, there are recipes for four different um, variations of deviled eggs. And with the horseradish and, and beets, I guess now is the time, good time to talk about it. This is what horseradish root looks like and it grows in the ground super deep and it will have these super long leaves, large leaves that kind of look like a larger version of kale. And you pull this up and this is what it looks like. I bought a couple to show you today. But all of these things, it's easy. We're easy. We have it easy right now here in Poland because you can buy uh, all of this stuff at any grocery store at, or at any market. And uh, when we lived in America, I had to, to get a good one. We'd have to make this. And it's kind of pain in the butt sometimes because it's super spicy on the nose when you're making it. And it's really hard. Uh, my, my recipe is to use the blender, and I just love doing that. But if you don't want to make your own, bachi carries um, shan, horseradish, and beets. So it's really nice and convenient. Another question is about the greenery on the table. The uh, greenery. Okay, so we, we have bukspan. Uh, it's called bukspan in Polish. I believe in English it's called box... Box holder? No. Box Willow? Mm-mm. Something. Hania, you can Google it quickly. Okay. Box tree. You're just using your phone, eh? Hannah's checking. Uh, I, my, uh, the English word escaped me. But uh, we use this to decorate. Boxwood. Boxwood. Yeah, there we go. Hannah, we got it. The internet saved our, our wonderful viewers saved us. It's okay. Boxwood. <laughs> uh, and we use this to decorate our baskets and our tables at Easter. And I also have pussy willows, which everybody knows are history, new, new life. So that's my decorations. Is this boiling? Oh, it's coming up to boil. Uh, my soup is coming up to boil. I'm going to turn it down to three. And I'm going to take, uh, can you come up here? Do we want to show this? Yeah, there's a good question too. Okay. Yeah, save that question. That's a good question. It's a mushroom question. Yes. So, but have Hold on, Hannah. Hang on, Hannah. Lovely. So my soup started boiling and these kind of solids started. I will take the peppercorns and put them back in there. But you just want to kind of skim this off. And this is a good time to turn on your smell vision because we're starting to smell these, uh, the smoky sausage and um, the vegetables are coming through and it's going to make a beautiful, gorgeous, flavorful broth uh, for, our, for our soup. You don't have to take all of them out. This is probably good enough. Just some of the main ones. I'm going to put these peppercorns back in here. It's flavor. We want that. And then I've turned this down to 3 out of 10. And it's just going to simmer. Let's say it's, what, 23 after? 23 after, yes. So we got uh, about 20, 25 minutes or so. You want me to set a timer? Yeah. Alexa, <laughs> give me a 25 minute timer. <laughs> 25 minutes. <laughs> okay, what's the mushroom question? Okay, uh, from Beth Hermina. So I bought a pound of dried Polish wild mushrooms. Uh, it's a lot. I made bigos with them and kapushnak and pierogi. The flavor is great, but I'm. But am I doing something wrong? But to I get, am doing something wrong. But I, no, it's am I. Oh, but am I? <laughs> but am I doing something wrong to get a rubbery texture? Do I need to soak and or boil them longer? Uh, so wild, uh, Polish wild mushrooms, I actually have some here. For uh, those of you who don't know what they look like, they are kind of dark and uh, 
they're dried, obviously, so they're super tough. Uh, to, if you're cooking with them, one, they have to be soaked for at least four hours, preferably overnight. <clears throat> Everything okay? I'm trying to connect with our friend from uh, surrounding Polish pottery. I'm trying to figure out. Uh -huh, okay. Um, so they have to be soaked for at least four hours, if not overnight, and they will kind of reconstitute. And then, once cooked and they're soft you should probably slice them to be a little bit smaller pieces. So then they're going to be a little bit of rubbery. Uh, they have consistency of um, squid or cooked squid. So they're a little bit, little bit rubbery. But if you soak them ahead of time and if you boil them for 20 or 30 minutes, they should, they should be nice and soft. Pound, and pound will um, take you... Uh, a little a little ways and you, you're using them correctly so that's how they are I guess that's their nature so in just a few minutes we are going to connect with Anya Krejci Anya Krejci is a friend who uh, is responsible for the Polish pottery uh, that we're seeing here this is one of her pieces and this one comes with a cover and I have my sausages in here and I could potentially uh, bake those uh, in my oven in this and then serve them right away as well so I think Mark is trying to figure that out but am I gonna be able to hear Anya if I my, don't know if my microphone is plugged in adding we are adding turn up the volume on this one There's Anya. Hello, hello. Is Anya? Yes. Hello. Cześć, Anio. We have a little bit of delay, so we're just going to have to take longer pauses. Anya, cześć. Hello. <laughs> I can't hear anything. I know. Hold on. We're going to try something. Can I have one of those? That's what I'm doing. Okay. And Hang on, Anya. This, to mark. <laughs> this technology thing, I feel I'm too old for, for okay. all of it. Put that in your ear hole. Oh, no. Mark is connected over here. <laughs> no, that's not good. <laughs> one moment. Technical difficulties. That's going to screw things up over here. Turn off the Bluetooth. I am. All right, are you connected over here? It will be in a second. Yep. <coughs> Can you hear him? Mm-mm. Can't hear anything. Yeah, it's still connected to the computer. Wait. Tell me if you hear the other one. Now I hear it. Or that one too. Oh, now yeah, połączyło się, no. You can hear her? I can't hear anything. Does it matter if the computer? Mm -hmm. Which one? Yeah. Which one? 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 Which and listeners, if you haven't already, tell us about surrounding Polish pottery and what is your business all about. Oh, I just 
just realized. I know, we can't do anything about that. The big one. It's beautiful. I love I love like this under underneath. It's all hand painted and Yeah, Mark's getting the big one, yeah. Can you explain to YouTube what's happening? Mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> Anu, uh, what do you have in your store right now with the Easter cup coming up? <laughs> mhm mm yeah And I will post that information afterwards as well to uh, all of my website subscribers. And I apologize to our YouTube viewers right now. We have connected uh, through Facebook Live with, uh, you're not seeing this, but uh, Anya is talking about Polish pottery and I will uh, email or email my uh, website subscribers the information about how to get the how to use the code uh, to shop in Anya's store. So if you go to my page, uh, just put your email in the newsletter um, box, and I will send the information uh, by the end of the day tomorrow. <clears throat> so uh, with this delay, I, I, Anya, I'm sorry. Uh, I think um, I can't hear again. Thank you for popping in, Anya. Um, I'm sorry, this is such a difficult um, technical uh, connection. Uh, but thanks for popping in. We'll post information uh, underneath in the event, and I will also email it to, to all of our friends. So thank you so much for stopping in. Any other questions? Okay, we should be back. Sorry, YouTube. I'm so sorry. You know, we try so hard and it's always <laughs> something always doesn't work. Hanya, any more questions? Uh, yeah, from okay. John C. Boyanski. Okay. Horseradish was always regarded as a Jewish ingredient here in the NYC uh, 
Paul and community when I was a kid. When it was when was it adopted by non Jews in Poland? Um Well I don't know. I would say horseradish in general has been used by I the entirety of Europe. The Germans yeah. have been using it for centuries. Uh, Russians, Belarusians, uh, they use it extensively in the Middle East. I mean, it's it's a it's an ingredient. It's, it's an a ingredient. popular popular ingredient. Maybe we came up with <laughs> with uh, mixing it with beet. <laughs> Maybe that's our contribution. <laughs> Next question, please. Uh, from Marianne to Bellis, uh, are there different variations of white borscht based on regions of Poland? I do my white borscht as my grandmother and mother made it. I do a yolk mash with white vinegar and hot boiling water. Egg whites, horseradish, root shavings, fresh and smoked kielbasa, uh, cubes with ham cubes, farmer's cheese, and rye bread cubes. Oh, yeah, cheese. yeah. I've heard of that variation. I, I, and I definitely think there's a... Uh, the recipe varies a little bit from depending on what where you are in the country. Uh, most of my recipes come from central Poland because uh, that's where my grandmother uh, was born and that's where she uh, lived until through her uh, childhood before the war, I guess. Uh, but that's her style of cooking. That's where her. That's how her family cooks. But uh, I know in the south there's a little bit different recipe. Uh, for barszcz or for for żurek, and on the east side of Poland, the, near Suwałki, uh, did I say east? Yeah, the eastern border. The the recipes can vary a little bit. The idea is normally the same, you know, soured flour, and then the ingredients um, will vary a little bit. Some some regions add mushrooms as well, wild mushrooms. Somebody said deviled eggs are Polish? Uh, well, food. <laughs> the deviled, this, well, deviled eggs may not be Polish, but we, our recipes may be different from what you're used to having. So maybe we add just different components of deviled eggs. Like these guys are with beets. Uh, I have a recipe that I put pickles in or some dill. So just different kind of style of cooking. Victoria Vaskowska, how do you feel about powdered żura? Can that be used as a substitute to the starter? It can be. Um, they, they have this, the question was, can you use the powdered żura as your soup starter? And they, they used to be a lot worse. Now the żura you buy that is powdered is just a little bit better. It doesn't have as many conservatives or preservatives in it. But I would uh, I would use it as a starter, but I would also add some sausage to it and some vegetables just to kind of bring it up a little bit. Okay, and then we have from um, Linda Lankowski. Do you use Vegeta? Vegeta. Vegeta. Um, I don't because it Vegeta is a little bit of a shortcut that... Um, that... Uh, hmm... How do I put this? So vegeta is uh, some veggies that you would put in normal soup and salt and uh, some other spices, cumin, I believe they put like in the powder, there. Right? Yeah. The seasoning powder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just don't like it because I, I don't feel I'm in control as much as far as flavor. So I don't use any. I know plenty of people who do. Carrie Dem, Dembo, Demboski, my family would always serve a raisin bread at Easter as it's traditional. Raisin, do we serve raisin bread at Easter? Uh, so we would do uh, yeasted babka with raisins, and I also have a recipe for that in my Easter tab. But yes, very, very Eastery, <laughs> I guess, Eastery recipe. And then from Mark Petruno, do you make your own smoked kielbasa? Also, what type of smoker do you use? Um, I do make my own smoked kielbasa. I actually have uh, a couple links here. I bought some today, and then I had this in my freezer. We made this with my husband last uh, last fall, I believe. <clears throat> so, what was the question? 
Do you make your own or what kind of smoker do you use? What kind of smoker? Uh, so this was smoked at my dad's house. And uh, I need to get a paper towel. And my dad's has a homemade rig. So I can't recommend uh, a brand or anything, but uh, we use a hot smoke. It's a stand-up smoker. It's a stand-up hot smoke smoker, um, which it's normally a barrel of some kind uh, with, or actually this, this, this one is, is a actually, a, oh yeah, it's a metal cabinet with, uh, with metal rods across and then we'll hang the sausage over it, but it's, it's a hot smoker. Uh, from Renee Leonard Michalek, do you have an Easter sweet bread recipe with raisins and icing? Yes, so if you go to poultrykitchen.com in the uh, top tab menu and then recipe index and then go to either desserts or Easter, I will have listed, uh, not will have, I have already listed uh, recipes for Easter cakes and a yeasted cake with raisins is one of them. Um, and yep, it's definitely a favorite around around this uh, time of year. How are you looking? Good looking? Looking good. Smelling good. Okay. More questions? Yes. From Lydia Lankowski. Do you make a babka shaped as a, uh, as a lamb? Do you serve butter in the shape of a lamb? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I've seen that, uh, and people do, or I guess people used to do this in the old country, uh, where they actually, when they actually made butter, uh, they would just, around the holidays, shape it into the shape of a lamb. Uh, I don't do it just because I don't make butter. I buy my in bricks. <laughs> and I actually haven't seen one in a long time here, but I have seen some in, some in America. And I'm sure you can buy those forms around I'm here sure too. Sure, you can. But you can. Seems to be getting a little more westernized. Yeah, here. but when when I was a kid, you could buy uh, these lambs that were made out of this super super sweet sugary kind of um, I don't know, I can't even tell you. It's not like a Jello. Not it's just super thick. It's like sugar and water and dried a little bit and we put it in our basket and then I wanted to eat it so bad because it's just sugar only. It's like putting spoonfuls of sugar in your mouth. It's just kids went crazy for it. Like Polish peeps. <laughs> Polish peeps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a question from Amy Rowling. Have you ever heard of a soup called dice soup? My grandmother used to make it similar to a split pea. But I can't find any re any re uh, reference to it, and I don't have her recipe. Maybe it's just what she called it. Have I heard of dice? Dice? Dice. Dice, dice soup. As in a six-sided tossing device. I have never heard of dice soup. Maybe one of the listeners knows it. If you tell me, um, if you tell me what was in it, maybe I can kind of figure it out. But shoot me an email or. Uh, post a comment somewhere. I'll try to see if I can decipher this dice. <laughs> okay, so I have a question. Tell me all about chicken jello. Okay, chicken jello. Um, so as, as I started saying earlier, we will start our Sunday Easter morning with a bowl of soup that, we, oops, sorry, that we have on the stove. And the white fresh sausage will go into the soup with uh, little chunks and then we'll put some uh, horseradish in it. But also in the morning time, we will eat this jello. It's, we call it galareta, just like jello, uh, but it's chicken and gelatin or uh, pig, pig's feet in gelatin, also known as jimnanogi, cold, cold feet. <laughs> So it's chicken cooked, normally in rosu. I need you two to be quiet because you're coming through in my video. <laughs> so it's cooked chicken that you'll take off the bone and you will put it in whatever mold that you want. And um, then you'll put, like you, you can see, can you see it? You want to bring it a little bit closer to the camera? And then you'll put uh, pieces of carrot and pieces 
of, uh, I normally also put um, peas, uh, green peas in it, and then a little parsley for color. And then you take the broth from chicken soup, you add a little bit of gelatin to it to make it be jello, and you pour it into your molds, and then we'll put, we'll eat it at Easter, and <laughs> serve it with some horseradish or some vinegar over it, or lemon. And this is one of the dishes that, uh, I love it. I grew up with it, so I guess it's uh, just 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 uh, just food that you eat. But uh, when my husband and I got married, he's not Polish, <laughs> but he eat, I make him eat it once a year at Easter, and he will take a couple bites out of it, and that's his annual Even my pop, contribution. <laughs> So as I was saying, uh, so we'll eat this and then we'll eat some eggs. And there's also a fun tradition that we do in my home. And I think if you're listening to this and you have some kids in your home, you will like doing it as well. So at breakfast, we have boiled, hard boiled eggs. And then I wish I had some prepared. I didn't think about it until now. But we do what we call egg wars. So... They do wrong. Demonstrate without you. Yeah, doing. okay. I have garlic clothes. It's almost the same. Oh, I don't see the garlic clothes in your hands. I apologize. So everyone will get an egg, hard-boiled egg, and we'll do egg wars. And the wars are you hit each other with the eggs and see whose egg survives the war. And whoever survives doesn't really get anything. It's just bragging rights <laughs> but it's kind of fun uh, i know i always looked forward to doing that when i was a kid and if you want to do a prank on someone give them a raw egg <laughs> that'll be fun <laughs> just be prepared to clean up yeah <laughs> uh what else do we serve and we serve sawatka yozhenova at breakfast and then we'll have a uh, different kind of different slices of meats. Uh, there is normally going to be like a ham uh, and maybe a nice smoked sausage that's thinly sliced and I have a uh, chicken breast that's also smoked uh, that you could do uh, or slices of nice smoked uh, cured bacon uh, and definitely pashtet. So this is pashtet chicken pate and this can be made out of chicken or pork. This happens to be chicken one. Uh, and I also have a recipe on my page, so I'm not gonna go into a whole method, but it's, it's a liver pate with chicken meat and chicken livers. So we'll have those sliced on the table as well. And a lot of this stuff Bachik carries, our, our friends at Bachik, so go over to their page, bachik.com, and they have a link to their store. And Bachik has also given us a the sound has come. Alexa, shut up. Uh, Bacik has given us a discount code to uh, do some shopping before Easter. And I will also uh, make sure to share it with you. Hi, Greg. So you can do some shopping. Okay, so our soup. So the soup has been boiling for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. I am going to take a bowl and at this time you're going to fish out all of our uh, all of our sausages and our veggies the sausage is ready to as well to be consumed but it's nice aromatic broth and there's little peppercorns and all that, all those uh, little grains, not grains, uh, seeds. You can fish them out if you want. And the bay leaf, if I can get it. So at this time, we're almost done with our soup. But if you were to make it for Easter, I would do it a day before and it, let it sit in the fridge and and let the flavors marry and it'll be so much better. So then you take your, um, uh, your starter 
and there'll be a layer of flour that has collected on the bottom. So we wanna make sure we have it all up. So just give it a good stir. And remember, this has been fermenting. So there's a bunch of gas in this bottle. So when you open it, you gotta make sure you're ready to pour it out, pour it into your soup or be prepared with a larger container or something. So it, see, you can hear the pop. Oh, and it's coming. And then you pour the starter. Can you hear? Yeah. It's bubbly. That's when you know this is naturally fermented product. You know, you can't, like, they're not putting carbonation in, <laughs> in jewelry. I'll tell you that the bachi starter is better than the stuff we buy here in Poland in the jar. Yeah, they do really well. They I'm do. really impressed. They, yeah. I love their brand. I, I used it all the time when we lived in America. And that's why I'm recommending it to you. So we're adding our starter and for those of you who aren't familiar with making uh, or you have maybe tasted the soup but you've never made it, this stuff smells funky because it's fermented. So it's a little bit different from probably what, whatever you're used to but just let it, you know, give it a chance and um, this is what's supposed to happen. So don't worry, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not gone bad or anything. And uh, to our soup, I'm also going to add a few um, garlic cloves, which will give us a nice another layer of flavor. And I'm just slicing it. You can, if you don't like uh, pieces of garlic floating in your soup, you can just crush it and throw it in there. I'm doing three. I like mine kind of garlicky. And we want to, I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Now, since this is a flour, uh, flour starter, as this comes to boil, it's going to thicken. So we want to give it a stir every couple of minutes to make sure that flour is not just settled to the bottom. So I just turned up my heat a little bit and since your bubbles. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to have it heating back here. And I'm also going to add uh, a handful almost of dried marjoram. And I love this stuff in the soup. It, if you don't put it in, it kind of tastes weird. Uh, I will say that I, I read a comment one time on one of your recipes using marjoram mm -hmm. where they said it was a little sarcastic, snippy thing about adding, you know, dust because marjoram has uh -huh. no flavor. If you if your margarine has no flavor, you're doing it wrong. Get well, your margarine. Yeah, get your margarine. Because it's, it's very flavorful. <laughs> it's supposed to be very flavorful. And there's uh, the the significance of the white sausage, the biakubas I put in there, is just a little bit different recipe from the smoked sausage. Uh, the the white sausage biakubasa has margarine in it, and the smoked ones normally don't. Uh, and they taste a little bit different. So uh, I just put a bunch in here and I'm going to let it go until it comes up to boil and then we'll look at it again. But we have time for a couple questions. Okay, question, Hannah, go ahead. Uh, from Dolores Mikula, will you talk about Dingus Day in Poland? Oh, yeah. In Cleveland, we have started celebrating this day. <clears throat> yes, good question. I'm glad you brought it up because I kind of forgot about it. I mentioned um, at the beginning that we celebrate several days of Easter, starting uh, with the basket blessing on, on Saturday. And then Sunday is our kind of main day of celebrations. People go to church and, you know, then we have the big breakfast. And, and then on Monday, uh, is uh, the day is called Lane Poninjalik, which means um, poured Monday or wet Monday. Um, also known as Schmingus Dingus. And I noticed that the word, the name for this, for this day in America evolved to Dingus Day, which is kind of funny. Not that Schmingus Dingus is not funny. It's funny. <laughs> Dingus is funny. But what it is, is the tradition behind it is that uh, back in the day, uh, out in the country, when boys wanted to kind of show their 
how do I say this? Flirtiness. Yeah, towards the girls, they would fill buckets with cold water from the well and throw it at the girls they, they liked. So it kind of evolved, and now everyone throws water at everybody. <laughs> In my household, it was kind of brutal, because depending on who got up first, <laughs> had the advantage, and uh, my dad always thought that he would be the first, but because like the way our house was set up bathroom the bathroom that he was using was downstairs and I would always wait for him to be done with with the shower in the morning and as he was coming upstairs I'd throw a bunch of water at him but this we was we would go crazy this wasn't just like a you know a sprinkle we would get like a pot and water would be flying everywhere floors were wet but if you're ever in Poland on Schmingles Dingles and you're walking down the street on Easter Monday, you can't get mad at people for throwing water at you. And p kids will, and I hate it. I try not to go outside on Monday. So I would get wet in my bed on, on Monday, on Easter Monday as well. So it's a thing. Um, Good question. From JVAS76. Uh, Cześć, my family is from Białystok. How would you say that your region's recipes differ? For instance, my family's recipes rarely call for dill or allspice. We never have put dill in our gołąbki. Um, I don't put dill in my gołąbki either. Uh, so this could be a regional thing, thing, but it could, could also be a very household to household difference. Um, and some of these recipes had to be uh, changed because of the ingredients weren't available or depending on the time of uh, where Poland was in the, in different times uh, and availability of ingredients so one there's a regionality to some dishes uh, that you know z uh, th there's a soup um, kwaśnica that is made down in the mountains uh, we call it kapuśniak um, it's a sauerkraut soup. Kwaśnica is made just a little bit differently. It's kind of the same concept, but there's just a few ingredients vary. Um, kwaśnica has less vegetables in it. Uh, it's mainly kind of meat and cabbage and potato or uh, uh, yeah, and potatoes. Very little meat. So, uh, so it's de definitely there's a regionality, but also I think it depends on. Uh, on the household and as I mentioned before my my style of cooking mainly comes from where my grandma grew up because that's where I that's how I cook I cook like her because I watched her the most um, so different moms cook, cook differently uh, I saw this question a couple times what is your favorite Easter dish what is my favorite Easter dish so this is a trick question because, oh, my soup is boiling. So I'm going to just turn it down to two and just let it boil for just a couple of minutes. But it's super bubbly. Can you see it? No. No. I can make that happen, though. Or I can come to you a little bit here. <laughs> it's full of bubbles, that carbonation. The soup got a little bit thicker, but it'll thicken a little bit more overnight, too. So I'm just going to let it go for a couple of minutes. So for Easter, there's a couple of things that I have to have to feel like Easter, uh, which is sałatka, the, the vegetable salad, uh, eggs, obviously, the chicken or pork jello, and pastet. If I have those things, I'm good to go. It's Easter in my book. Greg says that if you... Go downtown Chicago and throw water on somebody, you might get a different reaction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I imagine you so, would. <laughs> if your community yeah. has Dingus Day, fine. Do it where it's supposed to be done in your mm. community. Don't run around throwing water at strangers. It'll be weird. Uh, from Talia Snow TM, could we use the leftover chicken from the chicken soup to make anything? You can make chicken jello. You can make pasta. I'm just going to take, use, use my fingers. So pasta is mainly chick, uh, uh, chicken soup in meat form. <laughs> uh, 
because it's all the meat from rosu, uh, all the vegetables can go in it. You're gonna add some livers and some rosu to it and bake this gorgeous pashte. Uh, what else? Um, you can make pierogi out of chicken meat. And if you go to my page and under meat pierogi, you will see it. I also have a video on YouTube. Uh, you can make pasta chiki with chicken meat. Pasta chiki are, um, it's yeasted dough with meat filling. You can do uh, krokete, which is nalishniki, so the flat, super flat, thin pancakes, crepe-like. Uh, put some meat in there, you can do chicken, and then you, um, you put it in bread, um, make breading out of, uh, not, you don't make breading, you put an egg wash and then uh, bread crumbs and then you fry it. And all those recipes are on, on my page, so. I think we're coming up on an hour. Do we have a lot more questions? Uh, there's t as long as you stand up there, beautiful, people uh -huh. ask questions. Okay, um, well, we can go a few more minutes. Um, somebody says, my Chinese friends <clears throat> say that their, their food, Chinese food in America, is Americanized. Mm -hmm. Do you feel the same way about Polish food in America? Like when you were in the States and you'd see a Peter Garbiak. Yes, definitely, definitely. And uh, how so? Uh, I can definitely see that there, because of availability of ingredients, people had to change some of the recipes, um, especially for, like, I see it uh, in pierogi fillings. Um, some of the ones I've seen in America, we, we don't do. Uh, and I guess there's just a set of fillings that we do here, and nobody questions it, nobody tries to reinvent the wheel, wheel and we just cook it over and over. Uh, but yes, kitchen definitely evolves, uh, and that's why one of the reasons I started the blog was to show people that there is a way to cook tradition, traditionally having ingredients that you do that are available in America. Uh, and it's a lot easier these days than it was when I first moved there 20 years ago. So if you just follow my recipes, it'll take you, it'll take the food to closest that um, it's ever been to kind of Polish traditions. I think that's the, the comments that stick to me the most are the ones where I see uh, people say, you know, I'm so much whatever generation Pole in America, second, third, fourth generation, and I've never seen right. this cook before. Mm -hmm. This can't be Polish right. because I've never cooked it this way before. Right. And, and my thought is, we'll come to Poland and see. Yeah. You know, and it's. I don't, I, people shouldn't take. Are you that, frustrated? Well, people shouldn't take it as an insult because they're not familiar with. Yeah. What they thought oh, I definitely was, agree. was isn't. Yeah. That's not a slight against them or their family. Yeah. Things evolve, mm -hmm. and that's the way. It involved, and that's not necessarily bad. It's what America is made up is, is a melting pot. Big melting pot, for sure. But, you know, this, what you're trying to do is preserve a history of Polish yes, culture and Polish for sure. food and share it. And, and, and that's why I, I say this a lot on the blog and on Facebook or during these live events. I encourage you to try making this uh, the way I do. And it may be a little bit different from what you're used to, or maybe you've never had this chicken jello, uh, and maybe you won't even like it the first time, but if you want to preserve the traditions and if you want to learn more, this is the way to do it. And, you know, make it once, and if you don't like it, maybe tweak it a little bit and add some ingredients that are more familiar to you, and then try eating it. And I don't think you can go wrong with that. Uh, so I'm going to prepare the Zurek. Hanya, go ahead and read another question. Okay. Um, I have one somewhere. Uh, from Lori Ivanovic. Uh, what will you do with all this food since Easter is another week away? Will you freeze it? <laughs> oh, no, we don't eat it. <laughs> uh, the deviled eggs will not last till tomorrow. I guarantee it. Um, sawatka, that's normal. We eat it all the time. Jello, I will eat for sure within the next couple of days. 
Uh, some of the meats I may freeze uh, because that's just a lot. <laughs> but we have just a little bit of cake back here. And soup will be gone by tomorrow as well. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That, that not yeah. <laughs> so now to serve our, our Zurek, and again, I will say this, um, make it a day ahead and have it, let it sit overnight and taste it the day you make it and then taste it again the next morning and you will see the difference and it will be all worth it. So then to serve it on Easter, I would do... And since I have some smoked, so uh, yeah, I have some smoked sausage in here as well, I would probably give a few slices of that as well. But I'm just gonna do this like this right now. And uh, on days that aren't Easter, we would put an egg in here. Hard boiled egg would be cut in half and put in here. But I feel at Easter we eat so much eggs anyway, so I don't always put an egg in soup. But then you would take your soup and I will taste it to make sure it doesn't need any, uh, how did you call it? What do you do, swirly, swirly? Swirly, swirly. Uh-huh. Mm, it's perfect. It's nice and, and tangy, sour. Uh, the meat is coming through, the veggies are coming through. I wouldn't even add any more salt uh, to it, and which you have to be careful with the salt as well, because if your sausage has some saltiness and the smoked sausage will have some saltiness, so you, you don't want to uh, overdo it. But then you would just dish. I can smell the marjoram as well and the garlic in it too. You dish some soup, and I normally do rather small portions because there's a lot more food. And this is what our soup looks like. Looks good, huh? Beautiful. Here you go. Oh, Mark's favorite soup. <laughs> oh. All right, a couple more questions. And then at the end, I'm going to do a giveaway. I have to think of a question and we will send an apron to the winner. Mm -hmm. So stay, stick around. Somebody mentioned on the comments that they're shopping on Bocce right now, but you mentioned some kind of code. Mm -hmm. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but if you go into the event and then into the discussion, there is a photograph of Bocce stuff. And I believe in that post, there is a, um, there is a, a code. So just copy that. Uh, from Diana Kuyava, if you don't use bottled starter, do you have a recipe for homemade rice starter? I do, and uh, if you go to the Easter tab or go to polishkitchen.com and then um, recipe index or menu recipe index Easter, there'll be a, a recipe for starter. And you need almost a week uh, to make the starter. So if, you, if you're if you gonna make some, I would do it right away because it needs to ferment for a few days. Or go to Bachi and get it delivered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a question? Uh, we have a comment. Okay. More from uh, Greg. Well said, Mark. I am of German Czech heritage, but I am fascinated with other European countries' traditions. I think that family traditions in America are so rich because. Hanya, I don't know. We can hear all that. It's okay. Yeah. Ask a question. Okay. It's you're sitting kind of far. Yeah. And... I can be loud. No, it's okay. Do you, uh, from home, Patlenyak. Do you have a recipe for your eggs? Yes, I do have a recipe for eggs, um, for those and then three other kinds um, in the Easter tab. On www.polishyourkitchen.com. Yes, go to polishyourkitchen.com, then up at top menu, recipe index, and then click on Easter, and they'll be on there. Think, okay. uh, think of a question for our giveaway. Oh. Something that people would have to know if they've watched us before. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Hanya, you got a couple more questions? We'll do two more questions and then we'll do a giveaway. Okay. And then we'll eat our food. Uh, we have from, um, from Marian to Tabellis. In the U.S., we have a tradition of dying Easter eggs. How did the beautiful, ornate Polish Easter eggs come about? Hmm. Um, that's a good question, and I'm kind of ashamed. I don't know the answer to that. Um, but I do have um, a friend who makes beautiful pisanki. The eggs, uh, colored eggs in Polish are called pisanki, and there's a couple methods to make them. You dye your eggs first, and then you scrape the designs into their hard-boiled eggs for uh, people who aren't as uh, advanced in making them. And they're actually raw eggs for people who are uh, professionals, but they would scrape designs uh, into the, the dyed egg. And the second method is you, <clears throat> and this also can be made with uh, raw eggs that have been come with mushki. So you make two holes in the egg, in raw egg, and then you blow out the, well, they used to actually suck it out and eat raw eggs, but then <laughs> they, they did, you blow out the raw egg, and then you use wax to make designs into the egg, and then you dye them, um, and then you uh, heat the wax until it melts and the designs come through. I have a posting on my website about Pisanki. A friend of mine makes really gorgeous ones. I shall school myself on that. <laughs> uh, we have a question about the Easter Bunny. Uh, is there an Easter Bunny in Poland? Does that oh, like does Easter Bunny come with gifts? Uh, yes, he does. And, Did uh, you when you were a kid? Yeah, uh -huh. when I was a kid. Easter Bunny would come on uh, Easter Sunday and it would be like a small package of some sweets and, um, you know, just small stuff, normally sweets. Did and you do an Easter egg hunt? We didn't do Easter egg hunt, but we, the gift from the bunny would be hidden somewhere in the house mm. and we would have to find it, but there was no eggs. Like when, now we scatter, or in Americans, I guess. Uh, scatter eggs throughout the house and then there'll be a basket at the end, right? Yeah, usually. Yeah. Or it's some variation there right. in, depending on household and tradition. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we did. Okay, do you have a question? I, I do, I do. Okay. okay, so first person who will answer this question, will come closer to, or are you not I think decent? They, I'm sure they can hear me. Okay. <laughs> On one of our Kitchens Closed episodes, we went and saw a tree anomaly. What was the tree anomaly that we went and saw? First person gets a thingy. First person to answer that question will get an apron that says uh, Polish Chef in Training. Oh. <laughs> 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 That's fun. Barbara. Barbara Plecia, Crooked Forest. Good job. Barbara, if you can send me a Good message, uh, okay. uh, either on Facebook or email me at polishyourkitchen at gmail.com, and I will need your, uh, your full name, mailing address, and a phone number, and I'll ship uh, an apron to you. Barbara, there are people on your tail, man. <laughs> she was the first one, and then a thousand people yeah. came in. <laughs> Good job. So that's our Easter episode, I guess. If you are a, uh, uh, how do you sell it? How do you say it? A frequent flyer, I guess. <laughs> and you've been watching us for a long time. We appreciate it. Um, you will probably also know that we're still kind of recovering from COVID. We're not 100% uh, <laughs> healthy yet, as you can probably hear in my voice. Uh, so we're not back into making uh, two videos a week just just yet but as we're recovering we'll try to uh, get back into the swing of things uh, if you're new here i hope you can join us and subscribe to uh, our youtube channel and subscribe to my facebook page um, to my website just type in your email address 
you'll get a few emails at first and then I send an email occasionally with a new recipe or with some special that we have going on like with Bachik uh, or with Anya's Polish pottery uh, store. I am working on a cookbook that is to be published uh, before the summer so stay tuned it'll be a full book with all my recipes and more. Um, so I hope you stay around and learn more about Polish food. I hope you cook some this Easter and if you do send me pictures. I'll post them on my Facebook page. Good. Thanks guys for watching. We're gonna go eat now. Bye!